Upgrades, gears, locations, and talk. It's Ask EMBN. Ooh, that's a very deep voice, Christopher. First of all, on this week's show is a story from Brumster, who is contemplating a move to e-mountain bikes, but like so many, is no doubt bulking at the cost. Uh, I suffer from tinkeritis, and I'm quite happy to upgrade a bike over time. It's a good idea. If you take an example of Canyon on or a high bike Enduro and look at the version 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, my current thinking is to buy the low end model and evolve and upgrade it over time. So uh, the question from Brumster is, uh, does the approach stand for e-mountain biking compared to mountain biking? Uh, good, really good question. Yeah, I think it's a pretty good, uh, good idea you got going on there. Most manufacturers um, share that actual same frame design, same battery, same motor, as in the high end, as the low end as well. As, aside from specialized, of course, they sometimes stick that smaller battery in Plus, the some, lower well, end. Some, some brands have al aluminum lower end bikes mm -hmm. and carbon fiber higher end. Yeah, yeah, definitely, right? yeah. But yeah. a lot of it shares that all the same technology. So that actual bare sort of backbone of the bike is going be similar to that high-end bike so they're just cutting prices you know with the wheels fork suspension things like that which is you know is a really good way of getting that same bike and just upgrading it as you go you know for a cheaper option yeah I think the, the, the most important thing to remember with an e-bike is that the performance of an e-bike performance advantages of an e-bike are quite different to those on a conventional mountain bike because on a conventional bike people go for those little weight losses you know mm. 300 grams here and there whereas on an e-bike uh, the performance advantages are such things as battery range. So when you say you're gonna get a bike, you know, probably a 700 watt hour battery is better than a 500 mm -hmm. watt hour battery. But when you're talking about upgrading, I think the critical things are, are the suspension, although not so critical as it is on a conventional bike, uh, and things such as wheels and tyres and, and strong brakes, 200 millimetre rotors, really powerful fork pot calipers, yeah, would you yeah. say? Yeah, just all those contact points really, I think grips, pedals, usual, you, see, yeah, you know, yeah. things like that. But it's a damn good idea, Brumster, and I highly recommend it. There's also another part to uh, Brumster's story, and it's, it's to do about the, the manoeuvrability of an e-bike. He says that um, he needs to test ride some, but I think the weight and plushness of an e-mountain bike is gonna suit me down to the ground. I don't mind a bit of weight and slowness to the bike, if you will. Out of the Canyon and High Bike, which you say is the less fidgety and more stable? Or any other recommendations, recommendations for that matter? Which is more fidgety and more, more stable? I think, uh, I think all e-bikes are considerably more stable mm -hmm. Than, uh, than than conventional mountain bikes. So in that regard, I think if you compared, say, a 140 mil uh, trail bike compared to a 140 mil in, uh, uh, e mountain bike, the stability and the potential you can get it's on that bike is massively different. So if you had a really rocky, uh, rocky technical section on a conventional bike, you're going to be bouncing around quite a lot. It'd be really difficult to hold your line. However, take that e bike, and it's going to be way more planted, way more stable and uh, you're gonna keep your, keep your line far easier, would you agree? Chris? Yeah, definitely, yeah. I think you need to get out some demo days, just try those different bikes out, all those different mm. geometry, head angles, bottom bracket, uh, chain stay lengths, is gonna make a massive difference out on the trails. Yeah. But uh, what, what is important actually, and I've ridden quite a lot of e-bikes, is that the suspension, it's more to do with the suspension tune than it is the bike in general. Um, because you can get, like, say, a, one, a 120 bike with a really good progressive suspension tune in it with 2.8 tires, and that's going to be a really lively bike on the track compared to a bike with, say, a more linear suspension tune and with narrower tires. So there's lots and lots involved in us, not just the type of bike, it's the components that are bolted to it. Got this one in from Andrew Martin. Guys, I have a giant full E and it's eating the 11th tooth gear. I keep rounding teeth off. I use the gears, but when I get the speed up and put the torque down, I strip the lowest gear. I think you mean the highest gear there, actually. So we're talking about the smallest uh, cog on the cassette on the rear, basically getting a lot of jumping going on. What are you thinking, Steve? Don't ask me. <laughs> sounds like <laughs> sounds like you've got a worn chain or you've uh, got put like a new chain on an old cassette, things like that. That can cause a lot of jumping around. All that chain sounds as that could be worn out. So I would basically check your your chain stretch and that cassette wear as well. Mm. Um, also look at your gear index and things like that. Because chains do wear out quite a lot mm. on e-bikes, don't yeah, they? Definitely. Yeah, definitely. Um, but yeah, check that out first. Um, just check that everything's all in line, things like that as well. But we have done a really good uh, video about changing your chain and cassette and check that one out in the uh, link below. Okay, so first thing we can do is insert the cassette removal tool into the spline face. There's no master kit, it just goes in anywhere. Next thing we're gonna do, stick the chain whip on just some of those lower cogs. Just make sure it's 
nicely locked on there because there's nothing worse than trying to undo the cassette and that slip in and you skinning your knuckles on the cassette. So make sure the tool's in nice and tight. Then just oppose the chain whip, you'll feel it clicking around on the lock ring, pushing hard and then screw it. Once that's loose, you can just spin out the lock ring out the middle. It's really, really small. And then work on taking the cassette off. Uh, Andrew Greenwood's asking, hi Chris and Steve, one question, are there any plans for Yeti bikes to bring out an e-bike in the very near future? Uh, not that I'm aware of. Um, it's also a really expensive game as well for those manufacturers to get on board. I think if anyone's going to tackle that e-bike game now, you have to come in with a pretty strong package you know, to tackle what's out there. Do you know what, there's very, actually very few uh, bike brands who haven't got an e-bike now, mm. so uh, if, yeah, if, I was, I was going to actually do a feature on it, you know, what e-bike brand, what, what bike brands have not got an e-bike, mm. but it's actually a bit of a negative story, it's like, yeah. Yeah, well, they haven't got one, yeah, well, so what? So anyway, anyway, next on to, which is a shame because Yeti is a great company mm. and they make some great bikes. It'd be great can't, to see I can't, yeah. You know, it'd be amazing to see an e-bike Yeti. So come on, Chris Conroy, get in the workshop and knock yourself out one of those e-bikes. This from Keith Smithers, how do I upload photos that isn't anything down below to upload from? Does he mean down below as in New Zealand or Australia? God knows, I don't know, but yeah, it's really easy. You've got a new upload service on EMB Enters upload.embn.com. This is the actual address up on the screen now. Mm. Uh, this from Max Before Days. Uh, hi, I'm getting a Overvolt AM600i, that's a Lapierre. Uh, 27.5 plus a standard, but can take 27.5 or 29. I mainly ride natural tech trails and Surrey Hills. For the winter, I am considering going 29 front and rear, or 29 front and 27.5 plus rear. Or I could just leave it alone. Just leave it alone. Yeah. But I like it depends. Manufacturers have spent a lot of time dialing in that bike. You know, is it actually meant for 29s? Or? It says, so, okay, so here, here's, here's how it is. So if you change the wheel size, it's gonna alter the geometry of your bike. It's either gonna make uh, your bottom bracket lower or higher, depending on what wheel size. And that's gonna affect how the bike corners, how stable it is. Um, Obviously mud clearance as well, if it's quite tight, if you're going 29 ish you're going to be cramping yeah. that a little bit more tyre yeah. clearance in, especially winter months, probably not a good idea, yeah. I, you know, I wouldn't be too fussed. What I will say is that uh, a 29 inch tyre or 29 inch wheels in general are better in the mud and slippery conditions than a 27.5 plus. Having said that, if you've got a good 27 point uh, plus on the rear, that's a, you know, if, you re if you're riding technical trails like you say you're doing, it's really good to have that bite, you know, of a 2.8 tire on the back. Uh, and also, if you're riding trail centers, uh, a 27.5 plus front and rear mm -hmm. is actually a really good combination because if you get in 2.8, all those square edge hits on trail centers, which are becoming increasingly worn out, is a really good option to have. This from Paul Simpson. Chris, what's Paul asking? Hi chaps, I purchased my first e-bike about six weeks ago, a high bike 8.0 Xduro. I've been riding mountain bikes for years, but I love more technical climbs that I can now take on. Mm -hmm. I just want to know if any good biking areas, I go to Dalby Forest and my local woods, but now I need more of a challenge. The rock looked oh. a great challenge, but where in North Wales is it? He lives in Bradford and West Yorkshire. Paul, honestly, there's so many places in North Wales to go to, and it's not far from, from your place, I'd imagine. Um, where is it? Oh, it's pretty impossible to, to describe. But we did another ride on that trip, which is up Snowdon, and uh, that's a bridleways in that area for you to go and check out. We did um, uh, film, which we're going to put a link on later on. But where else? I mean, there's the Lake Districts, which is not far from you. There's uh, the Peak Districts. Um, there's loads of trail centres, like Clandegla's not far from you. Mm -hmm. Uh, I think any adventure in North Wales, if you get just get an Ordnance Survey map of North Wales and just have a look at the, the network of bridleways and and it's honestly, it's, it's insane. Uh, I'd particularly look in the Better Sakoid area, there's some good stuff there. Mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, check out the video, which myself, me and Chris did on, uh, on the climb up Snowdon, just down here. And there we were at the top of Britain's second highest mountain, Snowdon conquered on a bike that really had no right to be there. Ashley Holland. Should I buy an e-bike this year or wait till next year as they're changing at a rapid pace? They're not changing at a rapid pace, Ashley, really. 
Uh, he says he fancies a spectral on, but I do like integrated batteries. Ooh, I, I, I don't hang about, just start living life, buy the e-bike right now before they get out of stock. Um, Good thing with that spectral on is obviously you've got that external battery, meaning if you've got one in your backpack, you just whip it out, change that battery really quick, get on with the trail. Yeah, then lots of e-bikes are pretty easy. I mean, you say integrated, mm. uh, the spectral on is pretty integrated really if you think yeah, about it, it does look pretty I, I think lots of e-bikes have uh, they're easy to pop their batteries out i mm -hmm. guess it depends if you want a key a key operated one or not so like specialized ones are uh, just a bolt the spectrals are key operated mm -hmm. um I, I just go and buy it just, just go and buy get the bike just get on it just get on it got this one in from andrew mellon what happened to the don he used to do embn videos all the time what has happened to Don? Have you seen him? Don is still here. You'll see. You'll see the Don in the, in the upcoming weeks doing more e-bike stuff. He still rides his Canevo, does uplift all the time. Uh, I guess you know he's maybe doing some other videos at the minute. But the Don will definitely be back in weeks to come. Miha Sterpu. How they pronounce it? I have a question regarding e-bike motors. A friend of mine told me that it doesn't matter if I buy a Yamaha PWX or a PWSE because I won't be able to get the maximum torque of even 17 meters due to the fact you also need a high mass on the bike. I'm currently 65 kilograms. Is this true? Is it worth, is it worth it for me to buy an 18 newton meter motor? Um, the PWX is a fantastic motor. Mm, it's amazing. Uh, it's really reliable, and one of the great strengths of the PWX is the fact that when you're on an incline, that engagement is absolutely instant. So yeah. it's dead easy to start off on climbs. That's a really good mm. strength of it. Yeah. Uh, it doesn't work so well on higher cadences as other bikes, but in technical conditions, that, that PWX is a... Mm. I, I'd go for the PWX over the S, PWSC every day of the week. Yeah, it really yeah. decouples nice as well. So mm. once you go over that 25K, mm. it's really nice and yeah. smooth as and well. It's quiet, it's, quiet yeah, as well, isn't it's it? It's really reliable. Mm -hmm. One of my favorite motors, actually. Yeah, really strong. Strong, strong motor. Now, if you've got any, any doubt at all about the Yamaha PWX motor, me and Chris did uh, a pretty technical climb Biggest in North Wales today. called The Rock, and uh, I think it shows what that motor is capable of. We have done some crazy steep stuff on our bikes over the last few months, but it's all been very urban, very man-made. That's all very well and good, but we thought it's time to come to some proper mountains, which is why, Chris, I brought you here. What, some old ruins and a disused slate mine? Yeah, it looks great fun, can't wait to get into it. No, Chris, to this, the rock, oh, wow. a real mountain oh, rock face challenge. Whoa, on the exposure to my left is insane. Oh. And finally, end of five. When I changed from a 27.5 to a 29, a classic mountain bike, it made a huge difference, especially when rolling over technical challenges. Is there a similar difference with EMTBs? What have been your experiences? Uh, oh, crikey, uh, I guess I've been running 29 for since 2010. Uh, 29 did take a long, long time to catch on. And you know, even, even mm. last year in the World Cup downhill scene, uh, you know, people are still uh, move, making the move to 29 inch wheels. And when you get on a 29 inch wheel bike, particularly the longer travel ones, they are absolute flying machines. It's actually scary because <laughs> I certainly couldn't push a 29 inch wheel um, 180 mil bike to its limit because there's so much more potential with it. Um, yeah, I mean, obviously there's a different, different you, you yourself know there's different timing involved in braking. Uh, they're far better rolling over. Uh, sort of square edge stuff. But again, it does depend on the tires you're using as well. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of people talk about the different the different vibe, you know, a 29er is sort of steers slower than a 27.5. I mean, there's no end of comparison, but um, yeah, I think if you're talking, if you're talking e-mountain bike, then, then tire choice uh, is as important as wheel size on an e-bike. It's probably one of the biggest things we're seeing this year is a lot of manufacturers going over to that full 29er front and rear, especially more on those trail bikes. Yeah, it's a great feeling on the on the, on the Canyon Spectral. It's a really good feeling bike. It's, yeah. It doesn't feel quirky at all. It's really balanced and there's a, it's a good lively feel to it, I think. Uh, so yeah, maybe maybe a mix of two is, is, is the right answer, I, I don't know. Uh, I, I love riding 27.5, 29, and a mix of both. It all, as long as the bike's got good geometry, 
and uh, and good suspension. I think it's it's Certainly. it's all good. Yeah. yeah, and that's it from this week's Ask EMBN. Thanks for your great questions. Uh, really enjoy answering them. Mm -hmm. uh, if you've got any more questions, don't forget to drop them in the comments box below, hashtag Ask EMBN, and we'll get back to you next week. Uh, give us a thumbs up if you enjoyed the show, drop us some comments in the box below, and we'll see you next week.